Yes, my fellow COVID monkeys, it's February 2021 and patio heaters are back in stock at Amazon. Uh, finally, this is the Amazon Basics um, Havana Brown commercial patio heater. I don't know what makes it commercial. It puts out 46,000 BTUs. The big ones put out 48,000 BTUs. Uh, but anyway, a fine product made in uh, China. Uh, we wanted to get one for years, but if they've been out of stock and all kinds of scams and everything. And if you go to Home Despot, they never tell you what they have. You have to go down to find out, and I'm too lazy. Uh, but these finally uh, came in with the new year. I guess some containers are arriving. Had to wait a little bit to get this one because uh, everyone wants the all brown one, the ones that are a mixture of stainless steel and bronze people don't seem to like, or some of the goofy colors like blue. And then of course stainless steel would be great, but it's way too expensive, so no one buys that either. But anyway, so this finally came in, and I wanted to do a short video on how to put it together because I looked at some of the other ones on YouTube and they were sort of overproduced, self-indulgent twaddle, uh, unlike this video, which will be underproduced, self-indulgent uh, twaddle. Um, this is a 46 pound box. I got my wife to drag it in uh, because, you know, it's COVID and it was like one in the afternoon and I hadn't bothered to get dressed yet. Uh, so uh, she had actual clothes on. So she went out and, and muscled this thing in, but you probably want help to do it. It has handles so you can pick it up, but man, it's, a, it's kind of a, a, an awkward uh, shape. Uh, I was gonna do an unpacking video uh, of this, but she didn't wanna have the box in the house. So she ripped it open and took everything out. And uh, as I was kind of taping it up here to use it as a, a prop uh, this morning, uh, I realized she'd opened the bottom. So she told me she'd opened the top and took all the pieces out and she got down to a piece of uh, really hard to move um, styrofoam and, uh, and it broke as she was trying to get it out. And so she said, screw it. And she flipped the thing over and, and took the, the last piece out of the bottom. I'll insert some B-roll here of what the inside of this box looks like so you can see all the kind of packaging junk anyway. Sorry, I know the internet is all about unboxing and I, you know, I'm kind of screwing up here. Uh, anyway, I've laid the parts out. Uh, let's go and take a look at those. And here's what you have when everything's finally unpacked, a beautiful instruction manual in several languages and a hardware pack and kudos to Amazon for making their supplier sort the hardware into groups so you don't have to do it yourself. That's a nice touch. And I haven't seen that before on anything. And then it comes with one of these goofy wrenches that you'll use once and then throw in your wrench door and never use again because you've got you know better wrenches and you're not sure what size it is. Uh, the base that your propane tank sits on, that has a provision for weight inside of it. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Wheels that attach to the base so you can tip the whole thing back and roll it around. Those three pieces next to the base are the hoop that covers, that go over your propane tank. They bolt onto the base standing up. Then the lower post goes on top of the hoop. The upper post goes on top of the lower post. That decorative drum slides down over the whole mess and covers your propane tank. The burner goes on top of the top post. The hose snakes down the middle and connects to the uh, gas regulator that goes to your tank. And then those three uh, fan-shaped pieces, you bolt together to make a circle with a hole in the middle. And uh, the hole in the middle is plugged by the thing that looks like a blue, blue pie plate on the end there. So let's talk about this base for a minute that your propane tank sits on. It's a metal shell with a polypropylene tank molded into the bottom, a reservoir you're supposed to fill with something to give this some weight in addition to the weight of the propane tank that's gonna be sitting on here. Now, originally I wasn't gonna fill it with anything at all because I figured, hey, I live in California, weather's great. Uh, but then my wife reminded me about the windstorm we had three weeks ago that sent a branch crashing down that almost slammed into her car. And then I also realized that when this thing's on and our friends are over, they're likely to not be entirely sober. And uh, it'd be a shame if one of them stumbled into this black thing in the dark and knocked it over while it was on. So in the end, I am capitulating. I'm gonna fill this with something. Now, the manual helpfully has one sentence on this topic. It says, uh, fill with water or sand. Uh, water, even though it would be easy, seems to me to be a maintenance nightmare because I'm always gonna to have to be refilling it if it evaporates or stuff's gonna grow in it and I might have to put bleach in it or something. That, that, that's for the birds. So um, sand seemed to be the, the way to go. Uh, sand also has the additional advantage of being about one and a half times approximately heavier than uh, water. Well, denser actually, but in this gravity it turns out to be uh, heavier. Um, uh, the question is how much sand to put in. And if you go to Amazon, this question has been asked and people say uh, 25 pounds, 20 pounds, 40 pounds, who knows? So we're gonna find that out today. I went down to the local hardware store and got a 50 pound bag of quick crete um, uh, play sand, you know, sandbox sand. Uh, it's brown, has a bigger grain. I don't care about that because it's going in here. In fact, I could have gotten the white silica, you know, the fine uh, pool filter sand uh, for less money, but it only came in a 70 pound bag, which is more than I need. And it's more dust and it's harder to get rid of. So I think the playground sand is gonna be fine. So so 
Let's go out into the back where we can make a mess and figure out how much sand this thing actually holds. I think one of the other things I'm going to do is undo these four, you see these four screws here and then there's recessed bolts. I'm going to undo that even though it's not called for so I can take this tank out and deal with it separately outside of the shell uh, for two reasons. I think if I don't do that, I'm going to get sand between the tank and this ba uh, base metal part. And even though this is powder coated and pretty rough, I don't want to be abrading this with, with sand. I'd like it out of the way. So, um, so we'll pull these, uh, pull these screws out and uh, go over there and we'll have at it. So those mounting screws came out really easy. The nuts just fell on the ground. They, they live in these recessed cavities on the reverse side and there's a molding to hold them steady. So when you put this back together, you probably want to start upside down, drop the nuts in, stick your finger in, then flip it back side up and screw it back down. Um, this access hole is an inch and a half in diameter and I wanted a funnel of some kind to pour this stuff in. Uh, my wife had this big mouth funnel she uses in the kitchen, but it's, it's uh, a little too big. I think it's like two inches or inch and a quarter. Um, but I did find this, which is a piece of drain line you'd find under your uh, kitchen sink. Uh, and it's an inch and a quarter uh, interior diameter. But uh, by the time you get to the outer diameter and then this little lip that transitions to these threads, it fits in there just perfectly. And I cut it to a good length, overthinking things as always. And uh, I can stick this transmission funnel in here, which has a fairly large opening, not as large as I'd like. But that'll keep the funnel up off the bottom so we can keep pouring sand into this. So now it's just pour and slosh and pour and slosh and pour and slosh. If you really got fancy, you could build a nice uh, funnel with a with an angle piece so you could like fill it, fill it tilted, you know, and then kind of rotate it around instead of having to fill and slosh and fill and slosh like I'm going to try. We'll see how this works. Um, I don't know. I went ahead and weighed this uh, empty. It weighs two pounds. So we'll see how much sand we put in. Yeah, it makes a little mountain. You got to move a little mountain of uh, sand. Evidently, my bag handling skills are not the best. Maybe halfway full, seems like. Okay, I think we're to the make a little mountain in the middle and slosh it around stage because I can't get any more angle on this thing. Yeah, and it's too full for the funnel, so let's so that works good. Oops, oops. We're very close to the end. That's <laughs> less than a finger down. In fact, the, this is standing on the sand now. I can't quite shake it away, so this may be the last one. Okay, I'm going to call it a day. There might be a little more room in there, but <laughs> it's not. it'd be very hard to get to at this point. So let's see how much this weighs. Clean it off and see how much it weighs. So ladies and gentlemen, you'll be happy to know there are 27, 27 pounds of sand in here. So a little more than the nominal 25 people on Amazon were saying. Um, I do want to do this upside down, but uh, I don't want to hurt the metal. So I think I'll turn this upside down, stick the nuts in and jam some tape or something into these recesses to hold the nuts in and flip it back over. So jamming newspaper in there seemed to work really well. That is, if you still have newspaper around your house. I mean, we're old, so we do. Guess you could use, uh, you know, packing paper or something too. So let's see, this isn't keyed. Just have to line the holes up. So I got two with the newspaper, no problem. And then the other two kind of squirreled around a little bit, but, uh, Got those manually. So now we can finally start building the darn thing. So now we're going to go to our handy dandy hardware pack and take out the five small bolts. Use two to put the wheels on and three to put the uh, hoop parts on. And just look at the back of this thing. This is beautiful. You just pop out the back for each thing and they're all labeled and you get what you need. So I'm going to use my own wrenches instead of the goofy ones that come in the hardware pack. 
uh, these bolts are have a number 14 uh, a metric 14 uh, drive uh, and uh, I guess a 916s would probably work too. Now I'm going to set the hoop pieces and I'm going to keep them a little loosey goosey uh, till everything's uh, sort of aligned up here. You can already see the tank's going to slide in here and I, I bet this is these are for the chain to hold the tank in. There's one on each one, so it doesn't matter what goes into what position. Let's get the lower pipe and uh, stick it up here. And now it's time to use six large bolts and six flange nuts to stick the lower pipe on top of the hoop. Paradoxically, these large bolts, longer bolts, have a smaller head. These are number 10 metric uh, drive. And we'll just kind of dry fit everything here, all loosey goosey, and then tighten it up. And this is the lower pipe because it has the, the flange on it. And that's finally giving it some structural integrity so it'll be easier to move around. I've been letting it hang off the edge of the patio so I can grab it from the bottom, but now I can just uh, grab it from the top. All right. And now we're finally down to some easy fun stuff, putting the drum on and screwing the top post on with all of its warnings. And I got it matched pretty well, so the threads are putting the warning label uh, towards the wheels. Well, the manual says you need two people to assemble this thing because you need a person to hold up the burner unit while you put hardware on the top of it for the heat reflector. But I guess they never figured you could steal a six and a half inch uh, saucer from your wife's good china and cut a circle in the box with a slot for the controls and support the burner unit that way and then you can do it all by yourself. Voila! So now it's time to put in these standoffs they call reflector studs that hold the heat uh, reflector away from the top of the burner unit and we also use some of these, uh, they call them large flat washers, but they look <laughs> ridiculously little to me. And now we're ready to put the reflector together. So YouTube is a cruel mistress. I just shot for 40 minutes with two cameras, what I thought was going to be a cool time lapse, and neither camera managed to record anything. Now hold on there, Sonny Jim. Turns out the B camera did shoot some stuff before it filled up its memory. So we'll cut some of that time lapse in. So here it is all put together. Uh, instead of taking the plastic film off at this time, like the instructions say, I left a lot of it on to protect it. We'll take it off before we put it on the burner, of course. Uh, these sm small screws and number 10 bolts, I originally put in the other way, uh, and then I had second thoughts and turned them so the cap nuts here are on the roof, because the thinking being that heat from the burner will heat the head of the, head of the screw, and then uh, it, and the heat will flow into the cap nut and tend to tighten it, whereas if you put it the other way, the cap nut will get hot first and tend to loosen it. At least that's probably nonsense, but that was my uh, thinking. And you get a cleaner look underneath, I guess. Um, so you assemble these four outer sections all loosey-goosey, and I had put uh, two bolts in each join, which was a mistake, because when I put the pie plate on, I realized the top screw needed to go through the, into the pie plate as well. So I had to take these out and put them in a second time. Uh, all these outer donut plate pieces are the same. Um, this ridge doesn't seem to index anything. It just seems to be to strengthen it. Um, I guess that's it. So let's go ahead and put this on the top of the burner. Okay, got out our three wing nuts, and now this will be uh, washer, post, washer, cap, washer, wing nut. The washers seem to have a bad side and a nice side, or an, uh, a rough side and a smooth side. All right, let's put this thing up on the post. Now they say the controls are supposed to go to the front opposite the wheels, but uh, the front is loosely defined because the labels aren't exactly lined up and everything. Brought this out because, you know, short people got no reason to live. 
And, uh, oh, this is a lovely tag. Am I supposed to jam that down the, down the hole? Can we rip it off? No, it's really solid. All right, well, we'll curve it around. Kind of towards me. And something like that. Now it's time for our final bit of hardware, the four bolts with lock washers. The drawing in the manual isn't very clear, but and this is also number 10, as always. Okay, now it's time to screw on Mr. Gas Regulator. Take this little cap off the threads. Do not cross thread. So we gotta be careful here. Get rid of this. Okay. Let's go find some LP gas and uh, do a leak test. Okay, let's turn this on. This is a quarter ounce of dish soap to, and water to make an ounce, which is one to three, like I say in the instructions. It's not as good as a purpose-made micro-leak detector you can get in the store, but I don't have any of that stuff. Let me get a... Could use a better applicator too, huh? Oh, I think that might be leaking a little bit. Yep, sure is. Can try around here. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be okay. Okay, seems like we're good now. Now I'm gonna rinse this off because this uh, dish soap is not all that great for pipes. And the last thing is we just put in the little cutie chain. We can figure out, there we go. And done. And that's it, she's ready to go. So uh, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. And the sun's coming out. Guess we don't need it.